Hey guys, it's Holly and today I'm going to be doing a video on heat stroke. So this past week where I live, it's been up in the 90s and above 85 degrees and so I wanted to do a video all about how to prevent heat stroke, what the signs of heat stroke are, and how to cure it. I know in some places um, they've had temperatures over 100 degrees and it's not even summertime yet and so I know the summer is going to be really hot and heat stroke is super dangerous to rabbits. It's one of the biggest killers of rabbits, um, especially during the summertime. Rabbits are at a danger of heat stroke if it gets above 85 degrees. And so first I'm going to talk about what you can do to prevent heat stroke. Then I'm going to talk about what the signs of heat stroke are. And then I'm going to talk about what you can do to cure it if you get to it fast enough. Because it is so dangerous, it can kill the rabbit within just a few minutes, so you really need to act fast. So to prevent heat stroke. Preventing is always the best cure, um, no matter what it is. Whether it's, you know, a disease, a sickness, heat stroke, whatever it is. To prevent heat stroke. The number one thing that I do is that I give my bunnies frozen water bottles. So at the beginning of um, a hot stretch, I will freeze a bunch of water bottles um, <clears throat> and then I'll give them to my bunnies on really hot days when it gets about 90 degrees. Because my rabbitry is in the shade, I don't worry about them when it gets to be about 85 um, because they're almost always fine. Sometimes I will give it to pregnant does to make them more comfortable or to litters of babies like these guys um, or to bunnies that are sharing like these two. And so it got to be about 90 and I gave water bottles to all of my rabbits that seemed to need it. Other things you can do if you have a water bottle that has a flip top lid or um, if they're getting their water in crocs you can put ice cubes in it to keep the water cool. And another thing that's really good to do is to give them veggies that have been washed with water and that keeps them hydrated. Now you can't do that for babies that are under six months old but if your rabbit's over six months old, an adult, that's a great thing to do because it keeps them hydrated and that's one of the most important things when it gets really hot. Other preventative measures you can take would be freezing tiles and putting them in your rabbit's cage so they can lay on them. Um, putting ice cubes on the outside of your bunny's ears because the blood vessels are inside the rabbit's ears and that's how they release heat since rabbits don't sweat. They release heat through their ears, and so by putting ice cubes on their ears, you can help them cool them. You can help cool them off, and then you can also spritz their fur with water, just lightly mist them. And because you don't have to worry about getting them too cold because it's so hot out, there's nothing wrong with getting their body wet. You don't want to get their head wet, and you don't want to get their ears very wet. Um, that's why you want to put the ice cubes on the outside of the ears rather than on the insides. But besides that, it's okay to get their fur a little bit wet. So those are most of the preventative measures that I have. Besides the stuff that's just mostly common knowledge, don't put your rabbit in direct sunlight if it's supposed to get really hot. Um, always watch your bunnies if they're playing outside, even in the shade, um, because heat stroke can happen even in the shade if it's really, really hot or humid. And then... Um, don't let your rabbits play at all if it gets to be over 90 degrees um, because that can just get them too hot too fast because when they're exercising their heart rate is going up and they're getting hotter and with the temperatures already being so high there's a huge chance that they'll get too hot. And that leads me into one of my um, examples of an experience that actually happens to me. One of my bunnies had a very slight case of heat stroke a while back because I gave him some exercise and it was only about 85 degrees but he was a really big bunny um, and so he had a lot more fur than my others and he was <laughs> you guys are being crazy and he was um, very excited to be out playing and so I gave him some playtime in the shade it wasn't in the sunlight at all and he started showing some of the signs that I'm about to talk to you guys about and he started having heat stroke and then I used um, 
I used the cures that I'm going to Next talk to you guys about as well. Of heat stroke. And it's really important to have these signs memorized because you need to act fast, especially if they're showing some of the earlier signs of heat stroke. Because once they start showing some of the later signs, it's almost always too late. You can try to rush them into the vet, but most likely you're just going to spend several hundred dollars and then, you know, your bunny is going to be dead. Um, so it's really important to act very fast once these signs, if these signs come. They're having so much fun today. Alright, so the first sign that especially happened with my boy who um, got heat stroke was he was acting very frantic and like he was really confused and he was like jumping all over me and usually like he was a sweet buck but he wasn't, um, he was like jumping on top of me and just acting really crazy and confused and that's one of the very first signs. Then another sign that he did too was that um, he was drooling and so his chest and his chin were completely soaked and then I saw that it was coming from his mouth. Um, and then another sign is panting. Now rabbits won't put their tongue out and pant like a dog but they will just have really abnormally heavy breathing and you'll see it in their sides. It'll be very, very quick and very, very heavy. Um, and it will be abnormal. And then their ears might get red in some breeds um, where their ears are colored or if they're lop breeds, then you might not be able to tell that the ears are red. So I always recommend checking their ears. Um, if it's gonna be a hotter day, whenever you go check on your bunny, just check their ears and make sure that they're not getting too red. And then lethargy is another one, and this is usually once it gets, once the heat stroke is getting pretty bad. Um, if they don't wanna eat, if they're not coming up to you, if they just seem really lazy and um, sick, then that's another sign of heat stroke, um, which goes along with slow movement or weakness. <laughs> they're, they're on my notes. And then the third one that's usually when the rabbit is too far gone is convulsing and like they start having a seizure. And usually the rabbit's too far gone at this point. Um, so it's definitely something to avoid, avoid that point. All right, so now let's go on to the cures. If you catch heat stroke in time, it's really easy to cure it. Um, it's not a hard thing at all. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. But these are definitely things you need to keep in mind. Um, and you can do more Googling on it to see more cures. These are just ones that have worked for me personally and ones that have worked for other breeders and pet owners that I know. Um, so when you first see signs of heat stroke in your rabbit, bring it to a cool place. Even if it's already in the shade and it's already a cool place, bring it to like the basement of your house or a place that has great air conditioning um, or something like that. Just a really cool place that's below 70 degrees where they can just relax and start cooling off immediately. And then at the same time, um, start feeding them frozen veggies. So what I did with my little boy um, who got heat stroke a while back, this was a couple years ago, I got some veggies out of my garden and I washed them and then I froze them. And they didn't get completely frozen because it needed to be very, very quick, but they got, but the water that was on it froze really quickly. Um, and so there were just like little ice crystals on it. And so I fed those to him and he liked them. So he wasn't lethargic yet, um, but he ate them quickly. And then that helped cool him down immediately. You can also feed them mint, which naturally cools down rabbits. And that's also something you can do preventatively. And then also if they start getting heat stroke, you wanna cool them down really, really quickly. And so you can mist the outside of their ears with water, um, cool water. And you don't wanna get water on the inside of their ears because they can get an ear infection if it goes into their ear canal. So that's why you wanna put ice cubes on the back side of their ears and mist the back side of their ears with cool water. I don't recommend um, completely bathing them because that can shock the rabbit if it's really cool water. You can get their fur wet and that'll help, but you definitely don't want to put their head in water and you don't want to put their ears in water. And you All right, my last tip is just to call your vet. If you don't know what to do or if you are in panic mode and you can't think very well, just call the vet and get them into the vet as, as immediately as possible. Um, that's why I always recommend having emergency 
vet clinics on hand because you do want because you do want to make sure that you have an emergency vet on hand if something like this ever does happen. All right, guys, that's all the tips I have for today. I hope you guys learned something new, and I hope you guys enjoyed the bunnies binking around and being super cute. Um, keep your rabbits cool, and I hope you guys stay cool as well, and have a great week. Bye!